So welcome to part three about uh, yeah, this quadratic function. Eh? So first part, we, we graphed a qu uh, quadratic function and we noticed that it's a beautiful symmetrical parabola yeah, with a mirror line there in the middle. And then the second part, uh, part two, we have solved uh, three equations by looking at the graph, yeah, where y was zero, where y was two, and then after manipulating the equation, we found that that was actually the question by looking at your graph, where is y one? Now the last uh, part, uh, we're gonna answer the following question. It says by drawing a tangent, and I'll explain in a minute what a tangent is. We have to calculate the gradient, and I hope you're familiar with the word gradient because that says something about the steepness of a line, yeah, or a rise over a run, some of you will say, of the graph at x equals four. Okay, now the gradient of a curve, um, if I just go quickly back to this one, a linear function, yeah, where the highest power of x is one, if I graph that, the steepness on my line everywhere is the same. So the gradient is constant, yeah? If I go one step to the right here, and if I go two steps up, so I have a gradient of two, then if I, you know, at this point, go one to the right, I will also go two steps up, yeah? The gradient stays the same. However, when I look at a parabola, the gradient is not constant. It changes all the time. Like here, for instance, I'm going down very steeply, so I have a negative gradient. It's becoming less negative, less negative. It's getting big, bigger, bigger, bigger. Now my gradient is zero, actually, here at that minimum, because I have a horizontal, yeah? I'm turning, if you like. So I'll go from a negative gradient to zero gradient, and now all of a sudden to a positive gradient, and it's increasing, it's increasing, and it's a very high positive gradient. So anyway, I'm trying to show you that it's changing all the time. So to calculate the gradient, what do we have to do? We have to draw a tangent. We have to calculate or to find the gradient of a curve. We have to draw a tangent. And a tangent is a touchline at point x is 4. A touchline at point x is 4. Now, what is a touchline? It is a line just barely touching the graph at that point. Okay? And then we're going to find the gradient of that line. And that's going to be the gradient of the curve at that point. So a touchline just touching it and you have to take some time to do this properly yeah so it can't cut the line it cannot pass or it can't cut yeah, the curve it cannot just pass the curve now it just just has to touch it at that point yeah and no other points and you know with a sharp pencil it's a lot easier than with a thick uh, marker but I'm gonna do the best I can that will be well a touch line, not a very good tangent, but again, I apologize, it's the thickness of my marker. With a sharp pencil, you just gotta draw that line, just touching it at, the question was, x equals four. So you go to x four, you go to your curve, and you draw that tangent, that touch line over there. Okay. And now, if I find the gradient of that touch line, yeah, if I find the gradient of that tangent, then that will be the gradient at point x is four. How do we find gradient? Yeah, I explain this in more detail when I'm uh, when we're doing a coordinate geometry. But we said that it's the difference in the y direction, yeah, over the difference in the horizontal direction, yeah. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So what do I need? I need two coordinates and then I can calculate the gradient. So I'm gonna look at my tangent and I'm gonna find two beautiful, nice coordinates. Well, the easiest one is the one where you had to um, draw your tangent at. So that is point four, three. You see that? So that is one coordinate. And I'm just looking for any other good coordinates which I can find. This one, for instance, is also on an intersection point. It's at three minus one, okay? So I've got my two coordinates of my tangent and I'm gonna use those to calculate the gradient. Um, y2, so three, minus, now careful, because that is a minus one, yeah, so minus a minus one, over x1, which is four, four, minus, uh, sorry, x2, minus x1, which is three. Okay, there we go. And just to have a look very quickly, the tangent uh, is going up, so the gradient should be positive, yeah? So if I get a negative gradient, I've made a silly mistake. Three minus minus one, that is four. Four minus three is one. 
So the gradient, the steepness is going to be four as well. That happens to be coincidence, yeah, at point x equals four. So first you have to draw a tangent, uh, which is a touch line at that particular point. Then you find two good coordinates, yeah, so you can do delta y over delta x. Good. Explainingmaps.com for more resources. You can ask me a question there. Like and share this video, guys, if it was useful. Uh, we're moving on now to cubic functions. Yeah, so we've done linear functions, we've done quadratic functions now. What does a cubic function look like? Yeah, where the highest power of x is a 3. So I hope to see you there. Bye bye.